Roll call. Declaration of quorum. Mr. Lyle. Here. Mr. Griffin. Present. Mr. Tillman. Here. Dr. Kusick. Here. Ms. Tarnison. Here. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of our distinguished guests uh, here this evening. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Chris, Chris, yeah. uh, do we have any public comments? I did not check the sheet. James didn't sign up. James this week. didn't. <laughs> well, no one contacted no me. No one recognized it last time. Did <laughs> yeah. after adjournment, I noticed there was a name on it. Okay, consent agenda item three. Consent agenda. Do we have uh, any items that we would like to pull for discussion? There's several, several things. There are 14 of them, I believe. I do not. I don't. I have none. I'll make a motion to approve consent agenda. I'll second that. Go ahead and get that. Mr. Lau. Aye. Mr. Griffin. Aye. Mr. Tillman. Yes. Dr. Yes. <coughs> Item four, regular business. Uh, discussion of possible board action regarding arch architectural plans for transportation building. So this is just the initial draft of plans sent those to you so you have plenty of time to look. They'd send you, we had a meeting last week um, after I'd sent those plans. Um, and uh, we met with architects, Gary and I, and had a few minor changes in what was there. So basically, the existing is around 6,500 square feet divided in two parts. You've got where on the south side, you have three double doors that house six buses. That's a gravel parking lot, and uh, electrical outlets on the north side. And then we park uh, just some other vehicles on the north side. So we're basically doubling that footprint. So it would be 6,800 square feet that will go to the west. That goes far enough west that as they looked at it, they're going to have to grade out some of that Is that where slope. the orange flags are stuck in the ground over there? Uh, that would be, I think, still from the state on their on their project. Okay. But it is going to cut into that where it drops off. They're going to take that back a little bit and we'll just put a little gravel access road, nothing big. Um, on the west side, that will still be divided basically in the north and south part. The north part will have the shop entry, or excuse me, the uh, office entry, and the office uh, will have a, a little waiting room break area that has uh, two bathrooms and then an office area. That will lead to the shop, and the shop area is going to house your tractors, mowers, a little the smaller equipment. That will have a little more heat in it for in the winter because when they're actually doing uh, hands-on work. Uh, on the south side, that is basically in two parts. One third of it is a wash bay area. Uh, that wash bay will have a boil separator system uh, going to septic is how that will be uh, dispensed. Uh, and then the other part will have two double doors allowing uh, to house four buses uh, and then outlets on the north side. We asked about just to keep costs down to put gravel in that area to match the existing. Um, but by code, they think we may have to do concrete, but if not, we'll do gravel. Um, due to the occupancy level, we are not going to have to sprinkle it, uh, but you do have to put a fire barrier between the existing wall and what will be the new portion. And then we have to put one between the north and south division on the, north, on the west side. So um, that, that's really about it. Um, if anybody has any suggestions or changes, you know, Gary was involved with this, It'll get everything over there out of the current bus barn, be able to house everything, and then allow us to move to if we want to repurpose that building or raise it all together. And I've had a lot of good suggestions from coaches that are interested in their programs of how that building could benefit them. But seeing the district wide picture, I thought let's just hold off and we'll wait and see once we get over there. So, uh, no, no plans for that building right now. Um, budget. The budget on this, he said it would be one to one point one million dollars. Um, the our building fund, we finished the year with one point four, and anticipated to bring in approximately three hundred fifty thousand dollars in taxes. So, at the end of this year, next year at this time, if this building was completed and paid out, we would finish uh, next year's building fund budget with approximately seven to eight hundred thousand dollars. So, still more than healthy, uh, very. Very good. Most of that, it's uh, we might be able to buy some of the interior stuff with the general fund, 
Uh, but new building, new construction like that, that's going to have to be a building fund expenditure. So okay. we'll come back in and we'll put a perimeter fence on our own, um, secure that area. That way it can be secured at night and entries and, and what have you. Yes, Dave? What kind of time frame were they talking as far as start to finish? On so what we would do tonight, if there's no suggested plans, then they will go back, clean everything up, get the language ready for bid. In August, you will be presented a final set of plans. And then that would go out to bid for you know basically 20 days. So by the September meeting, we should be able to award bids. And then you figure two, three months of now they get into the in-depth planning process. So they probably start about six months after bids come in. And it shouldn't take very long at all to put So would you anticipate it all being piecemeal? I mean, bidding out the concrete, bidding out the plumbing, the lighting? It would be one project, yes. One, one, one GC, too. yes. Okay. Small project like this, I would not recommend that we go with a construction manager just because there's not a lot of intricate details. And so as but once we get to pick, the construction once we get to pick the GC, that falls on me. That's right. That's right. We hired him uh, that's right. and rehired him again. That's right. And I just worked 1% higher than the construction manager. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, small, this, this is an easy project that they anticipate. They anticipate a lot of people would bid on this just because it, you know, pretty easy, quick, quick in, quick out. So I think we should be next, done next year before school starts. So if everybody's comfortable, really the only action is, uh, is continue to move forward. I just want to make sure you had the budget numbers and know where we were building fund and how we would be paying for it. And so if everybody's comfortable with that, then I would just make that motion to uh, I'd recommend to the board that we move forward. I'll make a motion to move forward with the architectural plans for the transportation building. In second. Mr. Lyle? Aye. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mr. Tillman? Yes. Dr. Matusik? Yes. Mrs. Charles? Yes. Item 4.2, discussion of possible ward action regarding changes to the high school handbook. So, Mr. Faulkner could not be here tonight, so tried to, I told him to have something ready for you to explain each of the uh, changes. There, it probably pulled up um, on this. Uh, a lot of this is just cleaning up uh, some verbiage uh, that relates to like the state testing on uh, page 10. Let's see, is it page 10? That's honors. Yeah. Well, just start with page 9. You have the absences. You know, right now on the, on the second semester test exemptions, uh, they're exempt if they have an A and four absences or a B and three, and they just want to, teachers, they just want to reduce that to where it's an A and three absences or a B and two absences. They just want to come down one day. Um, the honors requirement reflect the wording on state tests. That was the one that ties in with the state. Uh, they added physics and chemistry uh, that they have to take a year Entire, in its entirety if they failed a semester. Um, currently he's done that with math. Just makes that more consistent. Um, and then the making up of time of work right now. The kid misses Friday and they get the one day extra, you know, teachers, it puts them in a bind to have to wait until Tuesday because right now it allows them to count Monday because they say Saturday, Sunday's their time. I mean, the teacher signs something on Friday and it's due Monday, you got to do it anyway. So just because you're gone on Friday, as long as they get the work in today's world, they're getting the work digitally. So that's what they're requesting is to do that for the weekends don't count. And then dress code, he gave an example. They're just policing some of the jeans. And like one of the examples they had is like currently the girls, uh, it's supposed to, shorts supposed to be fingertip length. And uh, they just want to say mid thigh just because some girls where they are, the arms are different. But with that is like the clothing. And I was telling uh, Dr. Matusik, like the holes in jeans, for example, you know, that's kind of a fashion. There was a, a, a student who was dress coded because she had a hole in her jean and her knee, and that was it. And I mean, it, you know, jeans that, you know, you pay great money for with a hole, you know, how, how we do. But we technically, well, I don't know. They just including make, yourself you <laughs> no I don't think they do they just wear they just wear gym shorts every day. Um, so they had one hole at the knee which 
if she was wearing shorts, she'd be revealing more leg than what this one hole at the knee. So they're just trying to clean up some things that, that makes it more uniform in policing, not changing anything. Fingertip length to mid-thigh length is not, it may affect some an inch or two, but it's it's just a general rule that it's easier easier for them to, to monitor and to police. So if they're if you're comfortable with all those, I would recommend them. If you're not and you'd like to wait till Mr. Faulkner can be here in August. Uh, we can pull any of them out, uh, or we can table the whole thing, whatever you're comfortable with. He and his staff are the ones that have to police. That's yes. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the changes to the high school handbook. <clears throat> I'll second that. Mr. Lau? Aye. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Mr. Tillman? Yes. Dr. Matusik? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. New business. <coughs> no new business to act upon. Item number six, superintendent's reports. Um, so it went over bus barn on the facilities. Um, just a couple other things as we finish up summer here. Uh, the fax room, they are doing the taping and mudding on the sheetrock in the kitchen area right now. So uh, they'll start getting the cabinets moved in and they're sitting in there. Then they're still scheduled to have the flooring start in late July. And, be ready to go in August. So, uh, luckily, they don't work outside right now with all the rain we've had. After I commented that it never rained in Oklahoma anymore, definitely prove me wrong. Um, Keep saying that. <laughs> <laughs> starting the pads uh, for shade structures at the playground and football field this week. Uh, so the shade structures that we have uh, going in. Daycare is about done. Uh, basically, just paint and trim work left. A little minor electrical stuff. Uh, and then I, I told you last month, I thought it was five, but it actually increases our capacity from 20 to 30 kids that we can house in there. We picked up that much square foot, so we're at 30. Um, and then right before school starts, the gentleman that's going to finish the fencing at the playground and that black vinyl fence with the curb uh, is supposed to be here that first week of August and get started uh, into that. Um, and then not really facilities related. Well, I guess it is because we are doing the... Uh, Heartland seating will be here for those seats that where it got bent underneath and there's a there's just about three seats in the center section about two or three rows up that if you sit in them I mean you just fall forward because they're just there's some framework that got bent underneath so they're coming in uh, to I fix those pretty much that whole row is it the whole row yeah, yeah. so they're going to supposedly get that fixed and they're going to be here starting next week and uh, along those lines, <clears throat> starting this Friday, it doesn't seem possible, but we have three fall sports that will be starting uh, practices. So um, during next week in the facilities, I made sure that that wouldn't get in the way with our volleyball coach of the bleacher work. So pretty easy to get along with. Um, Todd, I saw that uh, there was, I don't know if it was a module or just one of the screens on the large video yeah screen. he's doing like yellow you're, you're right i i hear that uh, i mean i've got some board members who might come and help <laughs> replace that module i'll get a scissor up there yeah that's good let's go replaced. that'll be replaced okay i like i didn't know to yeah. what extent and we have like a maintenance contract where they come no. and do it yeah good luck didn't they they don't answer the phone when we call yeah, <laughs> I've, got, I've got the modules i've got the modules they've replaced them before yeah yeah, on the I other, mean, that's not, yeah. On the other end, <laughs> on a ladder, <laughs> not on the system. But, I mean, I, yeah. Well, let us know what time the popcorn will be ready. When we come <laughs> Jack, please video. You, <laughs> and order another module because we've got lots. Okay, good. We've actually got, we've actually got several. We'll My theory of that is if you need one, buy two. But if you have land in storage. Um, Sorry to interrupt. Oh, you're good. You're good. Resignations received. Uh, Michelle Emmerich with the daycare and Corey Walker, uh, paraprofessional and assistant wrestling. And that's all I have on superintendent's report. Is there any problem of uh, finding workers for the daycare? I mean, we've had pretty good luck. I mean, I, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not like finding a trigonometry teacher. Or yeah. No, Carol and Randy. I'm on the alternate list. For the Do what? <laughs> I'm on the alternate list. <laughs> So now that so seems to fill up pretty easy. <laughs> we need to keep a look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion or questions for Mr. Turnberg? Um, is that, uh, is Mr. Walker's para job they are looking for? So, yes. yeah. And that is a high if school they have, para? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
yeah, there's a high school student, uh, a, a boy, he needs somebody that can handle him a little, you know, so it kind of takes a special person for that. Does it matter uh, male or female? No, and actually I think, I take that back, they're moving a young man from the elementary to the high school to take care of that student in the elementary. I do. Yeah. So go Rodriguez was moving. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. Take care of that. But there's another student. That but there's yeah. Then there's another one to fill that void, of moving up. Yes. Okay. And like I said, it doesn't matter if it's a male or a female. It prefers to be a female or a male just because of the strength, okay. the size of this individual at the high school. Just you know, sometimes needs just male supervision. Not violent, not anything like that. Just, just needs male supervision. All right, item number seven: personnel discussion and possible board action regarding the appointment of the following support staff for the 2023 and 2024 school year: a monitor for the walking track, a daycare worker, and a paraprofessional. I would recommend to employ uh, Emily Evans as monitor for the walking track and Cheyenne Fisher for the daycare. So moved. Second. Mr. Lau. Aye. Mr. Griffin. That was just the two spots. So the, the, yes, the agenda item calls for all three. That was not part of your motion. Apparently not. Okay. So for we didn't have didn't have a recommendation for the okay. paraprofessional at this time. Yes, sir. Okay. Then I have a paper. Mr. Tubman. That was yes. yes. No, I'm sorry. Dr. Matusik. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Agenda item 7.2: Discussion and possible board action regarding the following changes to the extra duty assignments. To add Rachel Franks as an elementary course uh, for a thousand dollars and Chelsea Heltzel as athletic trainer for six thousand dollars and summer athletic athletic trainer four thousand dollars these three were left off of that extra duty list just inadvertently last month uh, that we went over miss um, Franks I think uh, I had two or three emails from people from other towns telling me that you better keep her because she's incredible after she went to the at Dover and they did the, the kids program so, I mean, I just think that was something that Barry recommended and asked if we could do, and she's very deserving of it. And probably a thousand is not enough, but I'd recommend that we start her with that. And then Chelsea, when we brought her on, that's just her extra duty stipend as far as what she gets for the year and what she's done for summer. And she's been here this summer, and she's had, unfortunately had a chance to meet some of our kids, uh, you know, through injuries. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, so far getting a good reception from her with the students and the parents and the coaches. So. I'll make a motion to approve changes to the extra duty assignments by adding Rachel Franks, elementary course $1,000, Chelsea Heltzel, athletic trainer $6,000, and summer athletic trainer, athletic trainer $4,000. Second. Second. Oh, you got it? <laughs> yeah, right Mr. Aye. Mr. Griffin. Yes. Mr. Tillman. Yes. Dr. Cusick. Yes. Yes. Move to adjourn. Second. Mr. Lau. Aye. Yes. Mr. Griffin. Yes. Mr. Tillman. Yes. Yes. Mr. Thompson. Yes. Eighteen minutes.